Hello, Novabug here, and I'm now with a Play Expo with Top Pack Gaming Man. Hello, how are you there. doing, I'm sir? I'm very well, thank you. Yourself? I'm fine. How are you enjoying the show? And um, it's been interesting. Yes, very um, amusing. I've enjoyed myself <laughs> so far. Yes. What of your favourite exhibition or arcade or something? You've uh, taken a shine oh, to it, I think. I always love a bit of Marvel Madness with the trackball. It never gets old for no, me. No, I, I love hard as well. Marvel Madness. Yes, yes. Really it makes likes. me re on occasion, I must say. <laughs> but overall, an enjoyable sensory experience. Nice feeling on the fingers. Retro, very retro. It is indeed, we, we yes. We do like retro, don't we? Yes, yeah. Now, um, your videos make me laugh a lot. Uh, I think they make a few people laugh a lot. Okay, um, I hope it's for the right reasons. Well, yes, it is. It is for the right reasons. Um, and I want to pull you up on one of them. Okay. You talk about the Wii U. Are you a fan of the Wii U? I am a fan of the Wii U. Now, yes. I'm a fan of the Wii Good. U. A lot of people not, are they? It's because most people are uneducated. That, that's all it is. <laughs> that's all it comes down to. Yeah, because most of the games now you get on the Switch are basically on the Wii U. Yes, uh, the Switch I like to think of as the console of... Well, no, the Wii U is the console of the future because you can play all the future Switch releases today. <laughs> yeah, so the right. Wii U is the console They're of already the future. on it. Exactly, that's, that's yes. Right. Uh, and you also said that the controller was one of the best controllers you've ever used. Ah, oh, yes. It's, it just feels nice in, in the hands. It feels amazing. I think like, a lot my of big, use it. For my big manly Western hands, <laughs> it's absolutely perfect. Yeah. Like, have you ever actually have you ever played on a Famicom Mini, for example? No, I haven't. But they're, they're, they're like cutting into your hands kind of thing, isn't it? Famicom Minis, the controllers are smaller than this dictaphone. They're literally, they're outrageous. You expect it. <laughs> Fair enough for a small Like the Game Boy Micro. Japan. Like the Game Boy Micro. Yes, well, uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. I don't like that either. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's very ergonomic, that. Yes. And, a lot, and like you said, very bloody, almost bulletproof. Yes. Very, very different. Oh, you know, because Switch looks like it's going to fall apart in your hands, but... Uh, I'd agree. I don't feel as safe with a Switch as I did with uh, Wii U. No. <laughs> so, I've got to ask, how did you get into YouTube then? What, uh, what, how did you transition? Because you were a wrestler, weren't you? Yes, I was a pro wrestler for ten years. So how did you go from wrestling to game, talking about games on YouTube? Uh, I'd, I'd been collecting already since, well, I like to think of it more as procuring, because I never actually went out to get a collection, I just procured <laughs> a large amount of games. Just arrived at your doorstep. Yes, yeah, so I started doing that in 2002, and slowly amassed uh, a wide selection. Yeah. Uh, Blafora, or fun, essentially. Um, and then I'd always enjoyed watching like retro gaming channels on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, there's quite a few American channels I'd been watching. And I just noticed that they were getting these millions of views, and I noticed their content wasn't actually that good. Mm. But, but they were still getting millions of views. They had, Funny the, the thing what struck me was some of them, their lack of overall charisma. And yeah. I thought, I've got a knowledge of games, I'm charismatic, so why can I not basically transition what I've learnt in wrestling mm. and take it into YouTube instead, into gaming? Yeah, well, that's so, basically Because it I've is done. your true character. This is really you, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is course. indeed. This, yes. is, this, is, this is the man in real life. Yes, and I, I know because I've sat at a bar with him having a pint. Yes, indeed. And Every day I wake up yeah. and have a shower before I go mad. That's right. And indeed. always put the hat on, of course. Of course. Very of course. important, yes. isn't it? Um, so. You are not on the panel this year. I'm not. It's no, outrageous. It's, it's I'm disgusted. It? Yes. Mm. I didn't even get a free ticket. I had to pay no, to get in. We got I queued with the peasants. And you've got And friends. they smell bad as you, well. You've got friends like Kim Justice and Slopes on that panel exactly. as well. Exactly. And there's me on the outside. <laughs> Bloody Mr. Beefo, he gets his own panel. I know. And I, was, I had to pay to get in. I messaged the promoter and I just got ignored. Didn't even get to get in for free. Maybe you've got to... Um, but with them up a little bit. Maybe more. they just know nothing about YouTube. <laughs> Who's the contact? Who was their contact? <laughs> I, Do they know nothing? I think it might have been. I, I'm not sure. I, I, can't, I can't answer that. I'm sorry. 19,000 subscribers in two bloody he's years. He's getting so no emotional. Invite. He's getting so emotional. He's only knocking the dictaphone at me, and So, <laughs> wrestling then. Wrestling and games. Yes. Do you like them? 
Do I like what the, wrestling the, in games? The wrestling games themselves. I don't as know. a former pro wrestler. Yes, and, I'm not and, a fan. And a game as well. It'd be a bit like I don't know. Does the two mix for you? It'd be a bit like working as a carpenter than wanting to go home and play carpentry games. Yes. So no. Taking your work home kind of thing. Exactly. So, so no, you don't have not, a favourite wrestling, wrestling game. When I was younger, before I started wrestling, I did enjoy wrestling games. My favourite was WWF No Mercy or the Nintendo 64. Mm -hmm. I really like enjoyed. First that one game. I think I ever played was WWF WrestleMania on the Amstrad CPC. Which I think had Mr. Perfect in it. And okay, I've played four, it. I've played it. Four yes. moves. Yes, yes. <laughs> it got good reviews yeah, at the time. Yes. Because uh, that's another oh. system. Well, I think, like me, because oh, yeah. I focus a lot on the Amstrad, as you know. Yes. Uh, you like the Amstrad. I do. You? I love it. It was my first platform ever. Got from when I was only three years old. Yeah. So what was your favourite game on the Amstrad? I actually like Arkanoid. I you know, like Arkanoid's a fantastic yes. port. It really is. What else do I like? Who Dares Wins. Big fan of Who Dares Wins. Yes. Who Dares Wins too, actually, yeah. uh, to be precise. What well, do you think about all the like the famous styles like Chase HQ and Fantastic Port? That is guys or Contra for use in America. I've actually got a big soft spot for. Um, what's going to say? What's my train of thought now? I had a good one. I was going to bring up, and I forgot what it was. I like Fire Ant as well. You played Fire Ant. I haven't played that. No, I, I like Fire Ant. But there was one, there was a significant one I wanted to bring up. Now, completely lost my train of thought. It will come to you. It will. It come will. To you. It will. So, with regards to your channel, uh, could you give us any teasers or? Any ideas of what you've got upcoming next? Because you do like, um, forgive me for saying, you do like the odd clickbait title then. Oh, yes, you got it. <laughs> it's the only way to survive in mm. the modern YouTube Unashamedly. System. Unashamedly. Yes, yes. Just do it. But to be fair, at least I try, once you get past the clickbait, I like to try and create interesting content. Yeah. Like, you watch a lot of the channels out there these days, and they're just Nintendo Switch channels. Every video they upload is, I really love the Nintendo Switch. This game's amazing. I don't even believe them half the time. They love it as much as they yeah, claim they cross examine it that much. No. Exactly, exactly. So, so what, what have we got to plan then for us? Or, or, or is it just completely off the cuff? It's half and half. I, I plan a couple of weeks in advance. So, my next big one I'm intending to release is an in depth review of the 3DO and a lot of the games. And That's, the oh, I'll be interested in that. I'll Absolutely. be interested in that. The 3DO is an intriguing system. So, yes, yeah, a, a cross examination of the 3DO. Excellent. In, uh, Excellent. I'll, I'll look forward to seeing that. I look you. forward to seeing Thank that. You. So, well, there you go. I am Novabug, this is Top Hat Gaming Man. Yes, I forget your title, um, right? You can find me at Top Hat Gaming Man on Twitter. If the link will be in the description. If people box. feel they want to book me for future events. Yes. Never mind. Never mind. Sir. You'll be alright. Maybe next time. Yeah. Maybe next time. One day yeah. I'll get booked. Don't be feel too shocked. Yes. Yeah. At least, at least, at least I got to chat with you. Yes, thank yeah? you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Novabug out. Hello, Novabug here on the Play Blackpool sofa again, and now with this young lady, Octavius Kitten. How are you? <laughs> young. I don't know about you. Well, <laughs> Certainly I, I don't feel I'm... it today. No, no. <laughs> hey, this is your first event, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's my second one because I, I came to. One? Yeah, I was at uh, Manchester Play Expo. Not this one, just gone, but the one prior to that one. I only had about 50 subscribers. Right. Um, so nobody knew me. Well, since then, everyone knows you. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, Have you been recognised? Yeah, so much. Yeah. Like, to the point where it's it must like, be the ears. I, yeah, I guess it's because I. I wasn't wearing my big fluffy ears because uh, I thought that might be a bit too much. Right. Um, but apparently, <laughs> this is more than enough. You seem very chuffed to be here. I am, yeah. It, what are you finding the event? Um, yeah, it's, it's good. It's, it's really nice how that's kind of wound down a little bit because before I was getting a bit mardy about the fact that I couldn't really play many of the arcades. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, I've had some a, time to do that this time. I have. I've had a, I've had a bit of a crack at Point Blank. Um, I love Point Blank. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I was right playing game. it with the dude who's. Um, who's developed the Mau Mau Castle. And, you know, I, I went in there just kind of being like, yeah, I'm going to absolutely own you. Like, I'm awesome at this game. Proceeded <laughs> to get annihilated, and he'd never even played it before, so... Were you playing two-player? Quite upset. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, okay, two-player, two-player. But, like, the, the calibration was wrong. The oh, calibration then G, then, was then wrong. heavy G-Cons, so they've got yeah, one, yeah, one with, proper, ones yeah, with the pops. So got hold them like that. the recoil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good machine, though. It's a good, yeah, good, it's good cab, Brilliant. Though. It's one of my favourite games. Though. So, I, am, I don't know what your favourite system is. Can you please tell me? Oh, God, I don't even know. Um, Are you a Sega girl, a Nintendo girl? I don't. I don't. Or think, none. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I really have like a favourite system because I just I just like weird consoles and and weird games. Um, um, I think probably I would say the, the ZX Spectrum isn't really a system. Um, well, yeah, 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 it is. I mean, yeah, okay, I'll say that. <laughs> just because I, I love the um, the the history of how it's kind of how it was the seed which started this incredible yeah, gaming stuff like the 8-bit like and the early yeah, 80s yeah, and, and the whole concept of basic code and the fact that people used to just write their own video games in their bedroom was just fantastic and yeah and they're now thing. overtaken by these multi-million corporations and everything's organised yeah. now yeah yeah so you're, you're more of a retro gamer girl then than a, yeah than yeah a, 
definitely. Um, t- I, I'll be honest with you, I'm really, really bad at retro games. Like, shockingly bad. You Most know, of us are. <laughs> <laughs> one of my one of my things is that I absolutely ghouls and ghosts. I cannot I cannot deal with that game. Uh, uh, I don't no. think anybody can. To be no, but it's re- I can't even get past the first level. It's absolutely appalling. <laughs> you played on the Amstrad. No, it's unbelievable. Don't don't. If you, if you find it hard, <laughs> what, I you find it hard in the arcade. <laughs> you, got, you, don't, you don't even get like the armor knocked off. You, you just get killed you instantly. Just get killed <laughs> it's oh, I hate that. <laughs> they even made it even harder. Oh god, oh. that and stuff like Mega Man and. I'm appalling at that. Just, just shocking. But I mean, so I, you're picking the, all the hard games here, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, but there's, there's the good ones. Like <laughs> Mega Man is a fantastic game. Oh, it is, um, definitely. But it's just it. It's so. It's. I'm the kind of person who gets really quite mardy. Um, sorry, that's Northern correct. It is a Northern term. <laughs> I actually, my sister's from the North, so she does. Yeah, I know the term. So just explain it to the viewers. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> it was not, you know, I just had to explain to someone what a barm cake was, and they were really upset oh, when they right. found out it was just. They weren't even quoting the Arctic Monkeys, by the way. So, <laughs> right. No, no. Stay with me. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Um, so, I've got, where, where did the the cat idea come from? Where the um, is it a uh, your favourite animal or something like that? I'll be honest with you, it was a gimmick. It was a complete gimmick. I wasn't expecting to ever get more than, I don't know, 30 subscribers. And I just yeah. kind of, I, I I kind of liked the idea of creating just this really, really overly sexualised female character. So it was a deliberate thing. Yeah, it was deliberate because I thought it'd be funny. I thought I'd never get as many subscribers as I have. And it's just kind of stuck and it's it's cute and I, I but like you're comfortable it. with all that, too. I am completely comfortable with it, yeah. yeah because people are... Well, they are. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. So it wasn't a character, really. It was, just, it was you, but just a, like a almost like a semi cosplay kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Like it's um, with the character is very much a kind of it's 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 me, but with just a much bigger version of me, and also not as awkward and you know. Just Do you feel quite comfortable in front of the camera? Yeah, yeah, completely. Like I, I feel like I just can, be, can become a different person. Um, so it's it's really. Easy. It's a like escapism. Yeah, exactly. Kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's part of it. Like, if if I was uh, doing a channel just as myself, then I would never have even published up a single video. To be honest with you. <laughs> so, it's, so ninety percent you, maybe ten percent the character or something like what, 50, uh, fifty? Is it? No, I'd, I'd say like my my stupid videos are just all Octavius because uh, there's a lot of them where you know there'll be jokes or things that I say or do, and then I think, oh my god, I would never say that in real life. Yeah. I would never walk around with like. Be happy publishing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't mind because it's like it's not me it's a, a different character and I think quite a lot of YouTubers are like that no, I, think, no, I, think, I think you're spot on there. I mean yeah. yeah I mean there is a percentage of everybody on, on YouTube that is a character yeah uh, whether they're me or not yeah so uh, any upcoming videos that you got planned? I actually don't know what to do next. I you mean, just want to just shoot them out like that, and you have an idea, and bang, go. Yeah, usually, what usually happens is that um, I'll I'll start writing a script, and then if the game isn't good enough to write a script about, like if it's just going to become too boring, yeah. then I'll scrap it. So I mean, I was going to do one for Klonoa, or I was going to do uh, Hunchback on the Spectrum, and everything, but I just wasn't able to write any good jokes or any good bits. So there, I'll. So if you don't think it's fit for film, yeah, then. like I, I don't want to publish. Any Anything that people would like, I should just publishing it for the sake of it. Mm. So, yeah. So, no, nothing really planned. Just when when it, when it happens, it happens. Yeah, yeah. Watch this space, like... Octavius Kitten. Watch this space. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. I have no idea what I'm what I'm going to do next, but uh, it usually just comes comes at me. Like I'll find a game where I think, what is go- what is this? And then I think I have to make a video of it. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Um, final thing. Uh, do you think you'll come to an event like this again? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, you, now you've got the now you've got the buzz, as it were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> meeting clowns like me and him, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know we are clowns. Right? It's been really, really great to meet um, to meet some really cool people, and it's it's been fantastic to have some people who've been following me from the various. That always sounds really creepy. It's yeah. always like I'm going to follow you. <laughs> <laughs> not that lot you follow them down the road. No, like on Twitter, <laughs> like Sue people, <laughs> people who who I've never talked to before, but who were following me from the very very beginning, just come up and be like, oh, hey, Chris, and it's like. Wow, it's it is, amazing. It's a bit, yeah, it's funny though, isn't it? It's just almost like a taste of. I know it sounds quite egotistical, but like a taste of fame kind of thing. It's okay, like, yeah. It's the stage you're back when someone goes, 
recognises you. I've never seen you before in my life, but of course they know you through YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's so always really awkward when they when they say, you know, I, I talk to you on Twitter and that. But it's usually people who have like uh, something else, like not their face as a Twitter yeah. thing. So I'm always like, I don't know whether I should recognise you or not, and I feel bad that I don't. And, yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing you again at another event. Really? <laughs> I, I, I hope it's reciprocal. We don't know. Maybe. Of um, <laughs> but thank you very much, Octavius Kitten, for thank sitting you. down with us. Quick thank chat. Thank you very much for having me. That's all right. Um, Nova Bug out at Fort Tavis Kitten. Well, hello, Nova Bug here, and I'm here with Kim Justice. Kim Justice, yeah. yes, big scoop for me. Um. Well, there you go. Um, so you are YouTuber and columnist. I am a columnist. Yeah, mm-hmm. I write for a Retro Gamer and Retro Notes mostly. How did you get into that? Were you asked like head or, um, you apply I was, or yeah, just... I was kind of head. Well, I was headhunted for Retro Gamer. Where Darren, the editor, just kind of got in touch with me. Just said, "Oh, I like your videos. Are you interested in writing, yeah. doing like freelance stuff for them?" And um, yeah, I kind of did. Um, I've mostly done like the minority reports, talking about like underrated games. Yeah. But also, like, probably like, one of like, the proudest things I did. Like, I did a, like, a big feature on the Amiga 500. So mm. I got in touch with like a lot of people, like people like David Pleasance, um, guys who worked in it, like Chris Hulsbeck as well. Yeah. Trying to get into like, all aspects like the A500 story, and um, and yeah, retro noughts I just applied for, and right. um, you got and, the gig. and I, I got the gig. Know. Yeah, Jeremy was like, oh yeah, yeah, I'd love to have you writing, and cool. I've been really doing cool. that ever since. And you got, you're a big Amiga fan, aren't you? I am. Yeah. I mean, I kind of got into the Amiga quite late, as it mm. happens. Um, Christmas 1994. That is quite late. <laughs> it yeah. is really yeah. late. Like, Really, the system was dying, but, yeah, but yeah. no, I just loved it. Um, I kind of remember what I played: Sensible Soccer, James Classic. Pond Two, Cannon Fodder, Cannon Fodder, obviously. Yeah. Syndicate was probably my favourite of them all. Would you say Syndicate was your favourite game? Was Syndicate it? on the Amiga was amazing to me. It's just because it was like such an open world game and very. Um, Oh, that's like it's a really like one feeling game, isn't it? Like you're you're like you're heading like this multinational corporation that's just aiming to take over the that's world. That's what it's all about. That's escapism, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's totally escapism. And you end up essentially. Like, I mean, Syndicate's one of the few games I think where I can think of where you can actually like commit basically acts of terrorism. <laughs> I mean, I mean, a lot of games do that, though, don't they? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> dodgy stuff. Mate, this is very dodgy. Some of it, I don't. I'm not. There'd be a lot more controversy, I think, if it was released today in the yeah. in the form that it took. So, when you, how did you start doing YouTube first? I mean, what gave you the idea to sort of like start doing YouTube? So, I mean, I kind of pissed about on YouTube like for a couple of years doing little things like base videos mm. and some like those places I thought most of which is just long gone but I did a course I did a degree mm. in a TV production and after the first year of that I then just like got a long like summer break like about four months or something ridiculous like that mm-hmm. and I kind of thought well I need to do something to hone my skills and I've done like some writing like just on forums and that I'd like and so I thought, why don't I try doing that game videos? And the first thing I did was Space Harrier 2 and Super Thunderblade. Kind of them together, like I said. Super like, Thunderblade. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> the first two, like, <laughs> first, basically, like, the first two released Mega Drive games. Yeah. Um, and I did that first off, and um, I kind of just got a touch on it. I kind of got lucky with a couple of my early videos, like I did, like, a 20 worst Sega games. This Because um, in the beginning, when I called my channel the Mega Wii Views, Right. Um, playing on my speech and stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to get rid of that. So. No, well, yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. Um, in, I'm kind of thinking, well, there's not much. Everything on YouTube just seemed to be like Nintendo at the time. And there was it wasn't really UK centric. And there doesn't seem to be that much Sega. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot more now. And I mean, I hope. A lot of dedicated Sega channels, isn't there now? Yeah, there are a lot more dedicated Sega channels, which I'm really happy to see. Right. And also, a lot of stuff that was kind of still in the days kind of the dying days I guess like the angry reviewer like yeah. the a- I mean not so much the AVGM but all the cast offs of the AVGM that, kind of, that kind of style of video yeah that yeah. Really, like mock handles because yours are more documentary style I like they? more documentary and also in the beginning I like being more positive I like mm. I want to I do videos about games that I like I don't really want to do stuff yeah. about I mean I've covered plenty of games that I've hated but mostly I try to stick to stuff that I enjoy mm. and companies that I'm interested in and well, nowadays it's kind of yeah, just more whatever interests me, whether it's games, wrestling, mm. or whatever. M- m- sometimes not even related to anything like geeky culture. Did you like? But you're a big fan of wrestling, aren't you? Um, yeah. yeah. What's your What's your favourite wrestling video game? My favourite wrestling video game is a uh, Fire Pro Returns 
on the PlayStation wow. 2. Um, yeah. I played that, and the new one as well, Fire Pro World, is great too. But um, Fire Pro Returns, like, I specifically modded my PS2 for, and I can't tell you like the amount of hours that I put into that game. Like, Do you prefer that over the WWE ones? Then? Yeah, I mean, the WWE ones, I mean, I like Here Comes the Pain, it's always one it's, of my favourites. That's favorites. one of my favourites, It's a classic. The I mean, that, that they got the game engine down to a T at that, I think. That was really good, tight game They really did. That was kind of the high watermark for mm. it. And just a, such a great roster of characters yeah. as well. Like, kind of the prime that they've added to Ruthless Aggression era. Kind yeah, of it was, thing. yeah, totally like Ruthless Aggression, like the best mm. of. And then, yeah, after that, I don't know. I mean, I tried to play the WWE games today. Um, I find them virtually unplayable, to be honest. They're, they're, they're not as fun as they used to be. They're they haven't really seen that way, do they? They're just... It's just a mess of just all these different things, and it feels like it's not been properly looked at mm. in years. Yeah. I just, it's so disappointing to see, and I just wish, just wish to go back to something like Here Comes the Pain, where everything yeah. looks Keep it simple, good, but good. and you could really go and you could do some ridiculous stuff, like <laughs> being able to, like, I think, it was shut your mouth, or you could climb on the SmackDown fist. Oh, that was the uh, that was the third or fourth one, wasn't it? Yeah, Something yeah, else, yeah. yeah and that, that was like, or um, or in here comes the pain where you could um, you could get on the helicopter and do like a dime. Yeah, <laughs> but just silly things like that. It's like I want to see that again. I don't, you know, and be able to like put on like really entertaining matches. Mm. Whereas it seems like so much more hard work now in the new yeah. WWE games. Just can't get into it. So, um, so when you did the first documentary style video did you realise that your channel would like, take off like that um, I think when I did Ocean Software mm. that was kind of a big one for me because that kind of got shared in a lot of places that, it was, it's always a help when that happens when one video gets like a double like a multiple hits everywhere yeah, kind of, things start really, to take off it really took off that video it took off quite quickly and that was kind of when I thought I mean because I was still working at, um, I was still doing my regular job like, like working in education mm. and that was really the moment I thought Maybe I actually could do this. I could think about taking this full time. Yeah. Because uh, from there, I just kind of like kept the momentum going, kept doing like more documentaries. Yeah. Like I think after that, I did what the Amstrad well, one. The, that's the one that I really discovered you on. Was yeah. The Amstrad one. The Alan you know, Amstrad one. Yeah. I am so Amstrad. So mm. that one was. And that's when we got talking, of course, at that yeah, point, yeah, and yeah, we totally. got to know each other. I mean, obviously, yeah, you've so, been such a big Amstrad person, you, yeah, you kind of so got tracks to that quite quickly. We had a good chat about sugar oh, and yeah. his ethics. I, <laughs> I really want to kind of get to do another video about him at some point. So, may I ask, uh, because of the explosion you've shown and the popularity you've got, and you, like you say, you're, you're doing this full time now, mm. aren't you? Yeah. Uh, have, you, have you got, I mean, we all talk about people's comments and mm -hmm. there some are nasty. We know that the comment section is sometimes usually yeah. a bit toxic. Yeah, Have you ever got be. any blowback uh, by being a transsexual? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you get. I mean, my kind of philosophy with as far as like YouTube comments, like internet trolls, or whatever. Generally, people find something. Yeah, they always find something. No one's perfect. And it's just an easy target to have. And a go so it's a particularly that, easy it? target. Yeah, yeah. I'm transgender, so mm. it's, it's obviously some of that people's going to come. They're going to say what tranny, female, all yeah, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, all that usual um, bullshit. Yeah. yeah, all the usual bullets. Um, yeah, I mean, over years, it doesn't get, get to you. Does it? it used yeah. to, yeah. but I've developed kind of a thick skin over the years because I mean, before it was before I came out as trans, it was my speech impediment yeah. or. I'm fat, or you know anything. Uh, YouTube commenters find anything mm. about anyone that they yeah. can pick at, and some people, you know, respond badly to it, and that's why they do it. And so you just basically ignore I it. I just you ignore don't it now. You just carry on your stuff. Don't let, it down, don't, don't, don't let it get you down. Yeah, no. Like I mean, it's yeah. It's probably the most positive, positive thing to do as well. Isn't it, it is. Yeah. Just, just yeah. it's irrelevant, really, yeah, to your it's content. It's totally irrelevant. It's, it's totally not. Irrelevant um, it's not really going to spoil my day. No. Nice. That's good. That's good. That's a nice positive attitude. Yeah. Very, very good. Uh, so you're on the panel tomorrow. I am, yes. Are you looking forward to that? I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's the first time I've done like a panel like as like a YouTuber. Like, it's like yeah. it's people actually going to be here to see me. It's yeah. like it's a bit um a bit weird, but um but With I've got a good on you. yeah, but I've got a good like a good nervousness like yeah. causing me like thinking like. I'm nervous, but I'm also really excited, and plus I also get to be on the panel with like good friends of mine, it's like DJ Slope, Nostalgia Nerd, yeah. and Ashens, like, yeah. and, we know, and Dan and Ravi's going to be doing That's the right, interview, yeah, yeah. the retro of people, so yeah, it's really exciting, and it's like, I kind of went quite quickly from, because I mean, for the first few years, it's just me in my room, just making videos, and it wasn't until I went to a Manchester mm. last year, to play Expo Manchester, to play Expo Manchester, yeah, that I kind of, 
you kind of get to meet people there and all these people start suddenly come up to you and like, oh, I watch your stuff, you know, I've been watching you for years. It's quite, fa- it faces sometimes, doesn't it? When that it happens. is, it's yeah. like, whoa, okay. Cause Especially when you've got like a larger fan base like such as yourself. Yeah, and I kind of, yeah, and so it kind of gives you a bit of a buzz and... A little, little ego stroke. Yeah, it? yeah, it kind of, it does kind of make you, yeah, it kind of makes you feel a bit like a celebrity. <laughs> in a way, it doesn't. In it? the nicest possible way. In, in a nice way. <laughs> in, a, in a nice way without, you know, the endless celebrity yeah. grind and when yeah. all the coke, money and strippers. Yeah, <laughs> we, we avoid all that kind of stuff. Of course. <laughs> so, uh, my last thing, anything planned special for your channel coming up? Have you got any, anything in the works? So, um, it's like in the immediate time, I mean, I'm at another um, con next week. I'm at London Anime and Gaming Con. Yep. So I'm going to do stuff, and I'm actually doing a panel of Q&A by myself for that one, so that's a bit... Ooh, that'd be that, That's a bit intimidating. Hopefully that'll be on mm. YouTube at some point. Yeah, and hopefully they don't ask anything about anime, because I know yeah. nothing about anime. <laughs> <laughs> An anime <laughs> conference, but... Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, anime and gaming, so yeah, yeah just stick to gaming. It's like, isn't it? It's like, oh, I like Akira. I saw it about 20 years ago. Yeah? <laughs> um, Two by three eyes, that's about it for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, YouTube video-wise, um, yeah, I've got a few like really kind of different things sort of planned because I've been kind of taking a little, a little easy like at the start of the year but once I get back from all this events and that yeah. then it's going to start again and I've got my next video I'm not going to reveal much but it's not about gaming wrestling music anything that I've done in non channel for it's kind of more of a historic thing but it's a subject that really interests me and it's a cool story mm. and I've got certain other kind of different things and but I also want to get back on like the sort of gaming sort of documentary type thing yeah. I want to get back to covering people like I've got something about Robert Maxwell planned again because he oh, Mirosoft yeah, yeah the yeah. Mirosoft um, um, I mean because I did like the Mirosoft yeah, and Robert Maxwell is probably one of the most interesting people I've covered just for interesting how interesting is a good word <laughs> it is yeah, interesting um, certainly not a good person no <laughs> well <laughs> yeah look, well he's controversial I think the controversial best word controversial would be a good one but yeah I kind of want to get back to, I mean, I'm going to do a video about him and Rupert Murdoch Ah, and yes, endless yes. feud. So, so there's stuff like that planned. So there's going to be lots more like big old documentaries. And um, watch this space. Watch yeah, watch this space. space. There's loads coming. Wow. Well, there you go. Well, Kim Justice, thank you very much for taking this time to talk to me. Um, thank you very much. It's been very much. An over. Upside down home handshake there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's so. a special secret YouTube handshake. That's right. Right. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Nova guys. Bug and for Kim Justice out. Bye bye. Right, Novabug here at Play Blackpool again. It's 2018, and I'm here with Scott's Game Asylum. Hello, formerly known as Scott's Game Reviews. Yes. So, can you explain the uh, name change? Because um, it was doing my editing, really. I, when I changed that, I changed it up, like in a weird moment of madness. And it was like, oh, all right, I'll, I'm reviewing games. I'll call myself Scott's Game Reviews, but then realised that it's kind of bland. Yeah. So it was like, well, so that, that asylum give you like a bit of an edge. Yeah, it was like it? I thought at that time I was watching a lot of, um, oh, what's his name? Fuck. Um, <laughs> Is that where you can swear on this uh, video? Yeah, it's yeah fine. Uh, Russ's <laughs> game don, uh, Russ's game dungeon, <clears throat> and uh, I was like, ah, oh, Russ's game dungeon. It's like maybe I could sort of not nick it, but. Have my own spin on it, yeah. And I was yeah. like, all right, the game Asylum, because at one point I was working on a f- video series called the FMV Asylum. Mm-hmm. Also had a YouTube channel that I never promoted. Yeah, your previous one. Right? Yeah, yeah, I had a, an old channel which was called that. So I was like, all right, we'll go with that. And since then, it's, <laughs> that's the name. Do you think it's um, been a, 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 a successful change? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I, I kind, I like the reaction that people gave me because. When I did positive cha- feedback. Yeah, when I changed it, it was like, all right, I've changed it once again. I'm so sorry because I know pe- people don't like change at all. So You're too conservative. <laughs> yeah. So when I changed it, I got nothing but thumbs up from it. So I was like, all That's right, good. cool. Yeah, excellent so stuff. What kind of um, material you want to focus on in the future now? Um, mostly hidden gen games. I don't want to make Metal Jesus Rocks like little gimmick, but. I wanted to spin off from just doing one type of genre or one type of era. Yeah. I wanted to do a little bit of everything. So now, whatever game. So not too much FMV, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah I thought I'll, I'll go and yeah have a look at 
games on the PlayStation or the latest thing on the PC mm. or the Switch or you know any anything. That'd be really. good to see some Switch stuff. It would yeah, be good to see Switch stuff. I've got you know ideas, but most of the time I don't have a set role. No. So okay. if I'm f- playing something that I think oh, I might make something out of it, I'll do it. Yeah, you know, there's no um, sure. yeah no list or any of that shit. Is there any um, systems? I know you uh, you like the, you like Neo Geo, don't oh, you? Yeah. And you um, and you like PC Engine that mm. kind of stuff. Any kind of systems you want to focus on in the future? Or um, like well, recently I gave up collecting hardcore, so there's not really I don't have much of a focus on that anymore. There's still stuff that I will never ever get rid of, like a lot of my Japanese Saturn stuff. Sure. Um, yeah, so, it's, good, it's good stuff, man. Yeah, it's so good stuff to collect I'm, as well. I've it? never had it like focused. Like when I was collecting, I didn't. Well, I didn't have enough aptitude or balls to focus on one system. Yeah, because you know, some people can focus on one thing and get everything on that one console. But I've never been like that. I will go with what I feel I want to get at the time. So you would say you want to put on your channel what you want to put on. Yeah. You don't really. I mean, you appreciate what the audience wants, oh, yeah. but on the other hand, you want to keep it real to you. Yeah, and also, recently I did a survey on my channel. I did, I saw that survey, yeah. actually. Yeah. And um, it wasn't more of like, oh, do you want to see this, do you want to see that? It was more of me focusing on what matters on my channel. Like specific videos see. that you, yeah. type of style of videos you want to do? Because... That's and these are, in, the these are in-depth kind of reviews, or is that, with a little bit of humour. Uh, in, of a little bit of both, really. I normally you still like the shit ball, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I'm on a run, I'll just go with it. But most of the time, I try and keep my videos short and sweet. Cool. Like my mythos, if that's a thing, is such a pretentious thing to say. I like keeping punk rock. So right, yeah, keep it. Short, keep it sweet. Move your style, your yeah. style. Yeah, oh, I think that's that, well, it's genuine, isn't it? Yeah, it's genuine. What brings you back to play this year? Because this is the well, third time that we've met this year. Isn't yeah, it? So, uh, mostly it's for the people. You know, I'm not like I'm going in weird now because I'm not collecting. So going into the trade hall will not be my priority and all that <laughs> shit anymore. Yeah, Not excuse up. that. That's a sneeze from the cameraman. Uh, we'll we'll add that in. We won't cut that out of the video, by the way. Uh, just let him, let him clear his throat. Excuse me. Are you happy with that? Yeah? You happy with the cameraman fucking up? Yeah, right, yeah. Good. We'll carry on. Sorry, carry on. Carry on, Scott. <laughs> Sorry. What were we talking about? Yeah, we were talking, oh, yeah, we were talking about your, your yeah. focus on um, uh, not collecting. Yeah, I just don't... You know, so the trade hall, I'll go in there and look for stuff, but I'll probably more standing next to other people like oh yeah check that out that's a lot of fun mm. rather than buying everything under the fucking sun you maybe like, enjoy the arcades yeah, or be, maybe the exhibitions yeah well. I'll be going out you know I'll definitely want to check out the YouTube one on Sunday of yeah the, uh, I think we're looking forward to that yeah, yeah so to see Ashens and all that that'd be cool but my focus now will be on just the event as in general not face down in a bucket of games yeah so no. I'm looking forward to that no Cool. And um, finally, just uh, any thoughts on what you expect about the event? Do you think it's going to be different from last year? What, uh, you, what, you, it's kind what of you want weird. to be I think the, changed or anything? Yeah, the only thing that's concerning me is that they've changed the time again. Yeah. This is the third time in three Yeah, years. because we had, um, we had it in, uh, I think, May... The, pre- uh, the previous previous time yeah and then last year it was in August uh, because of the dates the, 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 the hotel couldn't book mm. the dates and then they changed it to February so there's a very short time yeah between the last event and now yeah. this event yeah so that's the only my concern with this one is that they may be blown their load too early because adequately a- put yeah uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I'll edit that one out <laughs> but <laughs> Alright, camera straight. Go, go, go. Get Get camera. Ready? Yeah, is that good? Okay. Alright, cool. go. Yeah, so, I'm, well, I'm just going to enjoy it anyway. So, fuck it, if the, if the events, like the talks and all that are not yeah, good, I'm not, not going to be watching those anyway. not so. too concerned about the halls this time, are you? No, really? so I'm just going to be going in and just, yeah. like, binging on arcade machines, really. Well, that's that's a good way to end, really, yeah. Because yeah, that's what binging on arcade machines is always good, yeah, yeah. isn't it? So, Scottsco Asylum, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, that's me done. That Here he is for him. Number by gal.
Novaberg here again at Ray Blackwall and look who I've bumped into. Alright guys. <laughs> Alright guys, he even says the catchphrase for I me. know, I've got um, <laughs> So anyone would know, look at this. It's like loving this, it's like Amstrad loving, you can feel it. Right. You were very impressed by this as well, weren't you? Chris? I was, look like at that. The, uh, the, the Amstrad yeah. flip case. Amstrad flip case. There's even an I Amstrad t shirt in my bag as I well. I was going to get changed. I've got the Amstrad t shirt, I've got that. I've got more camera. Oh, so right, yeah. I just didn't bring it with me. <laughs> uh, so, if, oh, no one knows. Essentially, Zypho is one of the reasons why I started YouTube. Because he was the, one of the only Amstrad channels around. Right. And I discovered, this is, hang on a minute, a man has the same love for the Jeeps or Fails. And yes, I do. Absolutely. So we have a mutual insanity, mm -hmm. don't we? Indeed, sir. So, but uh, you've been really making strides recently on the channel, haven't you? Um, yeah, yeah. I think it's sort of slowly expanding. It's getting there. It's been 10 long years. I think yeah. we've hit like 3,000 subs now. And it's a slowly growing bit by bit. But I think like the uh, live streaming, which you started as well, like, yeah, 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 the last yeah. year, that's really kind of grabbed a new audience and started building things. I like the impossible games thing that you do on the Amstrad. Yeah, yeah. I put myself through real hell and torture on some of those Man. games, aka Airwolf. Impossible Mission. Impossible Mission 1 and 2. Unbelievably difficult. Yeah. Oh. But my favourite one was the first one I did, the Aliens one, because I noticed no one on YouTube had done a long play of the Aliens first person perspective shoot em up, yeah. you know what I mean? And I was like, I've got to work it out, I've got to beat I it. Can, I couldn't work that ever in the back in the day, let alone now. Oh god, because it takes about an hour to beat, and the first two attempts failed, so I think it's like a four hour long stream of playing this see, game. I want to see you do Croco Magneto. <laughs> oh god, that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the deaths, so you get hit. Yeah, that's the, that's the ball bearing the, thing, yeah, isn't it? Oh, the it's line. got really a soundtrack, isn't it? That's, really a, that's a really good idea, I haven't thought of that one, so I may use that, yeah. yeah. So, what do you think of the event today? Uh, I think it's fantastically organised, as always, it's a lovely, there's something about Blackpool and retro, it just yeah. works in this environment here. It does seem to. Um, seem to work well, so I, I like this one because it's more veering towards the size of retro rather than like the Manchester one and stuff like that. So Less modern stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is cool. I like the Manchester one. That's a bit of a different experience. But here it feels like the home of retro and long may it continue. Damn, yeah. damn right, damn right. So this is the first time we've actually bumped into each other. We've missed each other occasionally. Loads of times, yeah, yeah. All yeah. the time. So, yeah, it took, I've taken him unawares. Taken myself unawares. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Ah, the G yeah, because we have a, lo a love for the GS4000. So, do you think, what are, you, what are your, I mean, I, I mean, you've obviously spoken about this before, but what would have saved the GX? Um, Concisely. <laughs> I don't think nothing would have saved it. I think maybe if it came out about two or three years earlier, it might have had a chance of a small amount of success. Yeah, yeah. But way too late, way too late. It wasn't late bad enough for games, so it needed to be cheaper, mm. more memory, there's loads of, it's, yeah. it's a lot of pieces for a lot of puzzles yeah. to be solved. I know. So, and the other thing I was going to say is the Spectrum Next. Obviously, we had the, the talk here at Blackboard about that. Yeah. And the question I was going to give over to them was, would that work with the CPC? Because kind of, the, with, with Plus being an, an enhanced version, yeah. could that be done? I don't know. I, kind of, it's one of those things I think about at home. I'm yeah. like, could this, I don't know. I hate to sort of say that the Amstrad doesn't have a large no, enough audience, no, I, I, I agree. but it kind of does, it's, it's got to get overseas, so it's got to be made cheap enough to be able to be sent over to France and Greece and Spain and Italy and all the different places that do love the Amstrad. Yeah, because they it's, have core markets. Yeah, 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 so it's got to be made cheap enough so it be sent overseas cheaply enough, and I think they may, it could work, I think it would generate a lot of nostalgia just based on the name of Amstrad. Would sugar like Ah, uh, God, what, well, it's Mr. Murdoch now, isn't Mr. it? Murdoch, Mr. Yeah, Murdoch right. owns the name Amstrad, so, um, Again, it's I don't know. Dodgy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you could call it the CPC next, rather than Amstrad, just don't use the Amstrad so just copy the Spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think Jim would be a bit upset. I know, but maybe, maybe he would. Maybe but Jim he has the it. tools and the mains to do it. It's a very similar architecture. Yeah. The Amstrad is just basically a super Spectrum in the first place anyway. Not yeah. head spec owners, but it's kind of true. Um, so it maybe first, <laughs> it's actually true. <laughs> so maybe the same guy who's made the Spectrum next could use his tools and knowledge to make the Amstrad next. Who knows? But uh, I would certainly buy ten copies at least. 
<laughs> Finally, uh, any any exciting videos you've got planned? In the um, up? Well, funny enough, there's an Amstrad in the um, in the main hall there. Six over the GoTech on it. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. And the game we had loaded up was uh, Exelon. Very very tough game. So that's the next long play in review. Um, lots of plans for like more live streaming. So people are really reacting well to that. So I put it out to my Patreons. Like which uh, what kind of themes for live streams do you want next and all that kind of stuff. So I'm getting lots of good feedback from that and I open it up to my Twitter and Facebook page at some point. So I'd like to do more bigger videos like that Amstrad documentary I did about 30 years for sure. CBC yeah. and get people like yourself involved and sure. I'd like to do more of them. It's just time. And unfortunately I've got a mini Zypho on the way. So I've got, time I've got, I've got is getting bugs. less and less and less at the moment. No, no, so. no mini Zypho. I've got three mini bugs. <laughs> three mini bugs. <laughs> mini bugs. It's not a car by the way. It's a car made by Sugar. Yeah. <laughs> Survival to the C5. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, oh, thank you. Zypho, put it there. Thank you very much. My pleasure, man. Me. All the best. Cheers. Another bug out. Hello, another bug here again at Play Blackpool with the, 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 the Dutch contingent, as it were. You've uh, come over and again. Again, again. Lovely to see you too. Thank you, Chris. Lovely to see what you. Brings yeah, you, to see what, you well. bring, what brings you over here again? The people. The people. The people. Because all the games, we've seen all the games before. The games, we? yeah, they're old games, you know, retro games, you know, I've played them all before. No, of course, <laughs> the retro games and the people. Yeah, I yeah. played uh, I played the arcades and I actually bought a t-shirt. Got a shirt? But no, Yeah, I got a shirt, but no games. No games this no, time. No, I was very proud of myself to be able to walk past all these nice stalls and all these games and not buy anything. Just to, to go inside of console passion, just look at all these prices and say, no. Yeah, they're, they're, they are pricey, aren't they? Well, nothing's changed there. I mean, I saw games of 60 and 45 pounds and all that. But yeah. No, I'm, I'm fine with what I, I was. I was looking for some Commodore games, which were there. There were Amiga games, there were SD were, games. I saw some CBN games. I had to dive yeah. under a table for them. I was People. searching for Amstrad games as well, and I couldn't find any. Because no, I was outnumbered by the Commodores. Right, so uh, outnumbered even. Well, the, the, I, I would have loved to, to <laughs> be able to find something yeah. if Commodore the, If I the like. computer museum had been here, they aren't, I yeah. think. Then console, we would console passion always are, but I mean, retro plushie, are they in there? I didn't notice this time. Oh, I don't think. I don't know. There were plushies, but I don't plushies, know. yeah. yeah. Retro plushies. No. So none of the talks this time interested you. Did you, did you go to any well, of the talks? We we, we, <laughs> we planned tried. on going to one of the talks, but we were an hour er, uh, early, and that's because of my watch being on the European time zone. Right. <laughs> we trusted Mark. <laughs> and then we decided to get it. some food, and then we were late. Yeah. And then Spectrum Next, sorry guys, but the Spectrum Next, we really wanted to go there. It was, it was a good talk. So, so busy. Uh, I believe our friend, uh, our headmaster at uh, Retro and Lim, has actually taped it. No. No, because uh, he decided that uh, he, he lost his cable for the camera. Oh, right. He lost he his cable for, for the that. camera oh. at that point. Oh. Uh, he, left oh, it in his, he left it in his sat nav. Oh. And, that, and that's on record now. Okay. Right, for Steve's embarrassment. Bloody, bloody hell. So, it doesn't matter, you see, you see how professional no. we are. <laughs> you, you you can I, I'm hoping for tomorrow that the panel discussions and stuff will, will be taped. And yeah, the yeah, they will be taped. I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll be overseeing that personally, and okay. as you can see from this personal setup here, oh, you, know, yeah. you know it's going to happen. Very professional. You can Very still remain our leader. I'll, uh, I'll have a video up on how he's. Yeah. Up if you there. flip over to Mark's channel, back to this serious crime, you'll see it. It's yeah, who's yeah, the mystery so. camera girl? That's that's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, right. Yeah. So, what is? I want to ask you. What is your favourite Commodore game ever? My favourite Commodore game ever. Christ! And we have a Commodore audience here as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I, I think. Oh man, that's a. Uh, I think. Well, I'm gonna have to go with Test Drive because what? that's that's the thing that we played the most, and I just so much had the feeling that I was really driving a Lotus. I picked a Lotus every time for some yeah. reason, and I never actually got to the top. I think when I was young. But that I mean, we played a lot of hardball, and we tried a million games. Uh, but I think um, uh, Test Drive is is the one, and I, that means also that I missed out on all the Uridiums and uh, Iris yeah. Alphas and and, uh, and 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 all the games that I think now are great games. Mm. But I just didn't have time to look at them because we we raced past so many games. Yeah. So test drive. Yeah. Same question for you. Well, it's actually a bit complicated. Um, 
I would have to say Bouldadesh, but I can't because my brother is so stinking good at it that he, he's able to play several levels. He just keeps going on and on and on. So a good second is actually Miss Pac-Man. Uh, but I haven't been playing that much recently, but yeah, Miss Pac-Man on the Commodore 64, it's, it's not even an original, nice. it's an arcade port, but it's just a lovely game, and I'm just, yeah, if, if, if Miss Pac-Man and a Commodore 64, it's always the game that I put on first, whenever I've, I haven't turned on my Commodore 64 for any period of time, yeah. Interesting, you, spe- you, you talked about the Spectrum Next um talk. Uh, I gave a question to the Olivers, and I'll ask you, you two as big Commodore fans. Uh, would you think that could work with a Commodore? A Dizzy game? No, the, oh, what they've the, done with the, the Spectrum the Next. This in, this thought, someone described it as like a super-powered 8-bit. Do you think that could work with the Commodore, if they tried that well, idea, or even in, the in Amstrad? Way, I think in a way it already is. There's there's this uh, C65 project, uh, a reimagination of the C65 going yeah. on. It's a hardware project. But it already exists, it's the Amiga. Yeah, yeah, well you've got the, the, Vi- is the Viper board with the Amiga, is it? The, the, the enhanced the Viper, the Amiga. Yeah, the, the Amiga Viper. is the Viper, Viper board. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, you mean like uh, an enhancement? Like a hardware board. unit, like the Spectrum Next is like hardware unit with all these enhancements on it. Um, would, yeah. it, you know, th- it would it get that backing, or is it just too niche? I, th- I think uh, probably why is a lot it, of... Why is the Spectrum so obvious to pick? I th- I because think it needs it, probably. Yeah, I, I guess. I guess. I guess a lot of. Yeah, I mean, they, all more Spectrum fans have just turned off now. No, no, but I mean, they do that all the time when they come in for Amstrad. They, you know, reprogramming the the, the, the the character set in real time to produce wonderful scrolling games and everything. You know, you 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 you, you lose so much uh, processing power to do these fancy tricks. Yeah. Uh, that be, being able to to use hardware sprites and do the same nice programming. On the spectrum is actually excellent. I think I think it would enhance a lot of spectrum games to something that's even better. But but because it's so much spectrum like, yeah, it's actually still feels like a spectrum. So, and I guess the Commodore 64, I don't see adding something onto that will will attract a following. I think the Commodore 64. So what you're is saying is the Com- the Commodore was perfect as it was. No, no, the <laughs> Commodore is flawed. The Commodore is also very flawed, but. I think I think the old eight bits because they're flawed because they're limited. Yeah. Uh, and and you see that with the new homebrew games that are coming out. I mean Galantia. Yeah. Uh, you know I mean the way that game plays. Uh, that that game. Uh, uh, it's part of their charm, isn't it as well? Yes. Yes. And Sam's yes. Journey. If you look Sam's at Journey. Sam's Journey is a game that I would never have expected to even run on the Commodore 64, but it and, does. And the new game from 8-Bit Guy, uh, a real-time strategy game, uh, I forgot the name. Is it X2 or something? Uh, but, but, I mean, it plays like, it, it, it actually plays uh, like uh, Command & Conquer on, mm. a, on an 8-Bit machine. Uh, the fact that they're limited is very cool. Yeah. And I think uh, if you if you take away the limits like on the spectrum next I think it's an excellent excellent mm. um, it's still limited but less limited less limited yeah, yeah. Less and I'm limited. actually very curious how it will turn out and I didn't back back the Kickstarter yeah. and Jim Begley if you're if you're watching please can I can I buy <laughs> the spectrum next somewhere no I, I'm I expensive feel so, I? yeah I feel so bad that I didn't back it but mm. uh, I really will I, I'm, I'm going to get one at some point so finally, will you come back to playback for one I day? I want to ask yep. you a question. You can ask me a because question. Because I think I, I, I'd love it. I, yeah. I'd love a Commodore 64 with uh, 32 sprites instead of 8. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and, and a bit of extra processing power. I'd love that. As long as it wouldn't uh, break compatibility with the old games, the C65, I'd be all for it. The C65 hardware project, I'm, I'm very curious how that will turn so out. So we, we do want a sort of enhanced Commodore then, definitely. Yeah. Oh, I'd right, have... be for it. I mean, it wouldn't kill the, the previous one, but, I, but I'd love a project like that. Yeah. Just to finally break free from the stupid H sprite limit, that would be lovely. <laughs> and yeah. the 3911 basic bytes free. Well, that is the all the Commodore you're going to get on this channel. Commodore, Amstrad CPC GX4000. Yes, well, we'll stop that right there. <laughs> Mark, thank you very much. Valter, thank, thank you very thank much. You. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see you soon. Yeah, okay. Definitely. Novabug out. Novabug here. Playback for on the Novabug sofa. It appears I've got mm-hmm. Slopes Game Room with me. How are you, sir? Hello. Hi. How you doing, Novabug? Why are you? Why are you here? Tell me, please. Uh, 
panel. Panel? With, with Kim Justice, Nostalgia Nogan, Ashins. Wow. What's going on there? Little old humble me with probably the ultimate YouTuber in, 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 in some regards, you know what I mean? I'm not sure you're referring to Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, I, mental I, stuff. I, yeah, yeah, no. Are you looking forward to the panel? Because oh, we're like, we're about an hour away from that, aren't we? So yeah, are you looking I, forward to doing that. I am so excited, mate. Yeah. So excited. Like this has been. I'm gutted. I haven't been before. You know what I mean? Mm. Like my eyes have been opened up to the retro gaming. Big thing. in it. Yeah, it's awesome. Have you been recognised a lot? You probably have. Constantly. Yeah. It's so cool. I mean. This helps. <laughs> that, you're a bit of an advert, really. <laughs> it's quite funny when someone says, "Is that just merch or are you slopes?" I'm slopes. Actual slopes. <laughs> yeah, you're going by your, are they calling you Dan or is it? No, everyone calls me slopes, slopes, which is weird. It, and it's always slopes with an yeah. S on the end. There's no one ever calls me slope. TJ slope. Dan is. Yeah. You're slopes. Slopes because it's slopes gaming, I suppose. So it? you you basically you started YouTube about what two and a half years ago now, is it? About three and a half years. Three ago. and a half years ago, mm -hmm. now. and your your growth has been rather spectacular, especially yeah, in the last pretty year. Pretty chuffed, yeah. Because um, <laughs> uh, I remember you just doing a video about where your inspirations came from, mm -hmm. partly from Stuart and Larry mm -hmm. and. And, um, uh, AVGN and stuff like that. Yeah, and Lazy Game Reviews, a, a couple of us, yeah. You, yeah, and Lazy Game Reviews. And you, you, you wanted a style for yourself. Mm -hmm. and I think you've got that now. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so how do you feel that's going, especially with your main series, like your Complete History series? Because, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, <clears throat> it's, it's strange because, you know, my most popular video, well, actually it isn't anymore, but my most popular Complete History is the Streets of Rage Complete History. Yeah. And I look back at that and I'm like, ooh come a long way and uh, even though I'm still very proud of that I've never wanted I've never put out a video I'm not proud of or I'm not too sure about you know um, yeah I, I feel like I've come a long way so much to the point where I'm a little bit embarrassed about my earlier videos you know yeah. but I think that's surely you're not going to take them down are you no no no. but I, I tell you what I will do I don't think I've ever told anyone this Nova Bug exclusive perhaps oh, ex <laughs> exclusive. Exclusive. exclusive it's exclusive All right. uh, I think when I get to a hundred complete histories, which sounds like really far away, but I'm about 50 at the moment, mm -hmm. and I'm pushing it up to about two a month, so it won't take too long. Um, I think I'm going to redo uh, Streets of Rage. Right. Okay. But I'll keep the old one. I'll just explain that, you know, uh, I didn't really know what I was doing back then in certain regards. There's a hell of a lot of the Streets of Rage story that wasn't covered. I didn't talk yeah. about the comics, you know, I didn't go into detail about the even the Tiger LCD games. Yeah. I've met the man now, you know, like that's more sort of to thing. know, there's more content to put in the video. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I, I, I think it's important to take stuff out. Um, sometimes to make a, a, a make a video flow for instance if I actually did every little bit of history I found out about the Metroid video that would be a four or five hour video and no one wants to watch that no you've got to yeah. make it succinct in a way absolutely you? absolutely yeah. and, and same with Grand Theft Auto of course as well do you find yeah. that makes uh, like a difference on your viewing figures yeah. uh, when, when the video is longer it can be someone sometimes a bit difficult for people to go through I'm it's weird because if I do something like, um, if I move away from uh, uh, complete histories, if I do something like a Kickstarter video, they're easier to make. Yeah. But uh, they get ten times more views. Uh, like those those viewership numbers are up, but the retention time isn't as high. Now, if I do like the um, Metroid Complete History, the retention time on that was incredible. It was yeah. close to the whole video. The Golden Axe one was pretty good as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah I was happy with that. I remember looking back though thinking I should have made that two videos because uh, I talked about Mega Games for a lot. In, right. A lot in that video. Okay. Like, for like half an hour before I even talked about Golden Axe. So yeah. what is it, what, what if you get situated? Because of the nature of your video is complete history. You, you kind of sort of put yourself right in a hole by calling it complete. Yeah, and expe yeah. people expect complete. So what happens then Someone comes out with another version of a, yeah, of a game, yeah, or say a new Shinobi <laughs> turns up tomorrow. That yeah, kind of and I, I sort of know that's going to happen with certain games. I mean, th this game will never matter. There will never be a sequel of a particular game. Yeah. There's never going to be a thing on a spring sequel. He may be. Yeah, you know, oh, the, the, the more the sort of obscure ones. Yeah, I know that they're not going to make another one, so I'm quite happy with where mm. they are. But. Double Dragon, two months later, Double Dragon 4 came out. Yeah. Like that, where did that come well, from? Talk make, about They can make another Golden Axe. I mean, yes, they no, probably will. I, I honestly believe in my lifetime there will be another Streets of Rage. Whether it will be good or not, they will make another Streets of Rage if they don't. They are the stupidest company. I mean, they're already <laughs> stupid for not doing it already. But, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I, I know that's going to happen. The craziest thing is, you know what's never going to have a sequel or, or any other port or anything? Bounder. Nothing's going to ever come of Bounder. <laughs> and then I make the video and six months later there's a Bounder mobile game coming out. Like, who, who, <laughs> who wanted that? I mean, I wanted that, but it's so crazy to think that that happened. Like, so it's, uh, it's just a risky take with that nature. It is, video, it is a risky yeah. thing, you know, but... Um, uh, 
it is, is what it is. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things. I mean, if you look at my Shenmue video, all the way through that video, I'm saying, there's a Shenmue 3 coming out. Let's do the complete history of Shenmue, which obviously it isn't, because yeah. I've just told you there's another one coming That's out right, eventually. Yeah. Um, the, the, the pre-complete, as it Yeah, as, I, as I'm getting into a stage where I'm going to be able to make more and more... Um, content as I take this full time eventually I don't, hopefully that'll be this year mm. um, the idea is Double Dragon 4 comes out or Shemmy 3 comes out or Streets of Rage 4 whatever it may be I can make a one off video mm. relate back to the original video and just make a one off midweek review and it's just yeah. a one off review about oh look here's a new Bounder game yeah. Outside of them videos, one thing I noticed about you, I mean, you've always, I think you've always been like this ever since you started, because like, you realise when you started quite small mm -hmm. um, how quite important, we would like to call it the community, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of the best word to use it, mm -hmm. but you've been a big supporter of that and you do really advocate smaller channels that you're interested in, mm -hmm. you do a regular video now and then 10 yeah, shout yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah, I do that um, once a year, um, without trying to... I don't know, bad mouth anything or anything like that. I, I, I was, I, I, as you know, I won the YouTube of the Year thing, um, and I didn't see that as a really good way of no. promoting smaller channels. Um, people would like, argue over who would be better and that. I know. And I just thought that I really do know about. You know, I pass it over to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. So um, sorry. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. It was one of those things. It was more like, fitting for me, I think, than you anyway. I yeah, think the absolutely, of that absolutely. And I, I realised that the best thing to do is just surprise. Some mostly surprise. Sometimes I tell people, but yeah. mostly surprise these channels. And I'm like, yeah, no, Arcadeology. I am actually a really big fan of your channel, right? And that's the thing. Like before you're a YouTuber, you you only well, for me at least, I only really knew of the big boys. Mm. I only really knew of your anger video game nerds, your lazy game reviews and stuff, which is good. You know, they're good channels. Yeah. But when I became a YouTuber. Then I started seeing other people that were similar to me. I was sort of like, oh, wow, I'm like, this Kim person is yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty bloody awesome. And then I obviously, I remember I, it took me a while before I found Nostalgia Note, but I went on a big hike. Like, everyone, have you checked out Nostalgia He's actually pretty fucking good. Yeah, like, yeah. And um, that's the thing. But they, they were moderate sized channels, but you look at people like, like I say, Arcadeology, Octavius, a lot of the channels I feature are, 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 are under a thousand subscribers. My, my Gamer XP. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's some incredible channels out there that are doing the stuff that I like. I mean, you know, everyone's got their own taste, and they're the ones that I think I want to feature. And not only do I do this 10 uh, YouTubers under 5,000 subscribers, which I will do for the rest of the time. If one year I don't make that video, please, everyone unsubscribe to me, because I want to do it for the rest That's of my YouTube. That's on record YouTube. now, by the way. It is on record. I'm happy <laughs> to say that. I'm going to do that every, uh, every year. I'm going to be trialling a new thing, though, where I actually, the same way Larry has featured my videos on his channel from time to time, I'm going to feature other people's videos on mine. Instead of just focusing on one person, it's going to be a one-off thing. I will do an introduction and say, you know what, I really like this channel. Um, uh, it was a big inspiration for me when I first grew up, or whatever it may be here it is yeah. and it's going to make a one-off video we're going to split revenue the same way me and Larry do and uh, hopefully they'll get a nice big bump of subscribers out of it especially right now I'm doing very well at the moment um, and it's my way of uh, giving back to the channels that I think, I, admire. I think it's very admirable to do that. It's, it's, it's a risky move. I'm going to try it once. And if you I might do get, get backlash. No, if I get nothing but negative backlash, I probably won't do it again. Yeah. And I'll go back and I'll just do my top ten. A lot, a lot of people on the YouTube can be a bit fickle. Yeah. So there is a, a potential for a backlash. And I, I'm, I'm going to keep it safe with them. You know, my complete history videos or my kick scammers, whatever it may be, will still be at the weekend. This will be a midweek video, and it's just to help out a smaller channel. Um, and yeah, like I say, I'm going. To, he, he hasn't asked for money. He said he doesn't want it, and I'm going to pay him the same way that I would get paid. And that, you know, from yeah. Larry, and I want it to be completely. So you, you also like the odd um, collab, don't you? And you're yeah, I love it, yeah. people on. I know you know it's got guest YouTubers all over your videos. And yeah, stuff. absolutely. Any. Absolutely. Um, can you give us any clue of who who's going to appear soon as a voiceover? I, I, I have or no idea. I don't know what I'm doing for my next week video. So put it this way: Do you plan ahead? Obviously, you swear you write to, to a degree. So. I mean, like, so on the way up here, obviously, my, my complete history is a uh, section. So I have my bit at the beginning where I talk about my personal. Then I do the little bit where I talk about a little bit too further. Now let's go back to the beginning, and then I do the. That's kind of a bit of a trope for the video, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I do that every time. But yeah. then what happens is, at the moment, all I've done is my personal history part of the script. Welcome to Slopes Game Room. That's as far as I've yeah. got in the script so far. Sometimes I'll just already start editing that video before the rest of it's done. Before the voiceovers done, before the script's done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's just the I, I, I'm so last minute, go, 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 and. 
I'll, I'll, I'll just say, uh, 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 my game works speak, can you quickly just do some voice for me? I need it in four hours. I'm so bad like yeah. that. Um, in fact, uh, G to the ne- G to next level. I always, I always say it wrong. G to next level, which is the other guy from I Retro Gamer. Yeah. Um, uh, I asked him to do the voice for my um, pirated software Nintendo video that went live last night. Um, he wasn't able to make it because I said I need this in four hours. He's like, I live in America and I'm at work. <laughs> he can't do it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm very. Um, last minute, last minute, last minute. But that's that's how like it works, and that's how I'm like able a last to get minute idea kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. If I if I have a quote that's spoke by a guy, I'm like, right, who who have I not seen for a little while? Okay, you're going to ask that person to do a voice for me. Or, yeah. Or, uh, I need a, I need my token female. Let's get Octavius in, or whatever <laughs> you know, or whoever it may be. Sadly, there isn't a lot of choice in the female. No. Side I mean, of things. No, we need to get more gamer girls. Yeah, we definitely do. Definitely. My my um, I think it's like female watching on my channel is like less than 5% it's gone up now I think it's it's for most of us I mean uh, like, I think like a study was recently done where YouTube is predominantly a male dom- domain anyway uh, because it's just nature but yeah, yeah. you know that, that is what it is you can't really force that kind of issue no no I no I mean I've, I've had um, Gebs and Octavius and now I'm running low I'm going to choose who to ask <laughs> Octavius and Gibbs, that's about it. Uh, maybe yeah. there's a few others, I'm sure there are. I'm sure uh, there are. Lydia. Sure. There are. You've got Lydia. Well. Yeah, Lydia, Lydia, yeah, I could get yeah. old Squid Gaming, yeah. Lydia. So. Yeah, I've tried to her a few times. Yeah. Right, well, I, I don't think I've got anything else to say. Oh, well, hang on a minute, one more thing. Yeah. Um, I always ask you this mm-hmm. favourite Amstrad CPC game? Uh, Fantastic Dizzy? Probably. That's a great. Fantastic Dizzy? Uh, Fantastic Dizzy, that's my favourite Fantasy Dizzy game. World Dizzy. Fantasy World Dizzy. My favourite Dizzy as well. Yeah? Yeah. That's pretty man, cool. That's dizzy the first Dizzy I could Oli- I think it's the Oliver's f- favourite one as well. Oh, is it? Yeah. That's cool, man. That's cool. Because the first one they sort of felt they fleshed out the story and got the system, got the mechanics right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, actually, the a proper guilty pleasure on the uh, uh, Amstrad is the uh, Oh Mummy. I love Oh Mummy. You spend hours on that, man. Yeah, it's just. And then no, zone out. Eventually, like, it's like, there's no harder level, you can just go on forever. But. Yeah. I had fun with that. That's quite cool. That's quite cool. Well, I'm stopping you from getting to your panel now. So, Slopes Game Room, thank you very much. Thank you. This is Never Bug at Playback for with Slopes Game Room. Cheers, Never Bug. Out. Letters. <laughs>